All right, peeps, on today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the genius will be answering all sorts of hot nonsense from YouTube. Lots of gems, lots of New York Ninja, lots of isometric holds while Bruce Lee flipping nunchucks all over your face in a wild place. James Cagney here too. Let's get to it. <laughs> And every day, I practice martial arts. Yo, Dre, how you doing, man? I'm really good, Sifu. How are you today? Good. It's good to see you again in front um, of me. I agree. Yeah, you know, I think people get a little antsy. It's good to see me again in front of you, in <laughs> back of you with this mirror there. I think people get a little antsy when they, the episode starts and they don't know, is it going to be Mikey? Is it going to be Dre? Is it going to be Mikey? And then is they're like, be you know, because I, I'm is starting to be... think that the um, KFG podcast is starting to get a little bit of a, there's a team Mikey, team Dre thing kind of going on. I oh, think I think the old school guys are more partial like to going. you because you're the OG and they just cannot accept another <laughs> woman in my life. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but like the new school guys yeah. who've seen Mikey a little bit more than uh -huh. uh, and the old school guys. They're like, are, who's this guy? No, they prefer his, his, his uh, ability to enunciate words and yeah, read. Of course, of course. Uh, so, uh, of course. so yeah, so I don't know. Like, I, I don't know when people see that, uh, yeah. the beginning of the episode, and then you come in, or Mikey comes in, mm -hmm. like half the audience going, ah. It's, the like, other going, it's oh. like Pringles and Doritos. You know, you, you love your Doritos. You like, but once in a while, you want some Pringles. What? You want to open up a can <laughs> with a British it. accent, <laughs> pop it up. You know, yeah. when, we know when people use these kind of examples to help the audience relate. Like, I did not relate to any of that. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Right. You know, it's more, I'd say more like Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg yes. in a cage fight. Right. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So, for the record, I'm, Tesla, I'm, I'm Zuckerberg. Yeah, I'm the Tesla absolutely. I, they, I, they're both hateful, but I'll take Zuckerberg. Yeah, although Zuckerberg's you know I mean? a bit of an alien, I would love to see him, like, triangle choke the shit out of <laughs> yeah. Elon Musk. 100%. That would actually be yeah. crazy. So anyway, before we get started, just want to remind it's everyone UFC that the tonight, best though. way to support the kung fu genius oh. podcast is on patreon patreon.com slash the kung fu genius for as yeah. little as five dollars a month you can get access to episodes early mm -hmm. as well as my instagram subscriber reels and uh you basically get fast track to any questions you want answered on the kung fu genius podcast as always if you do have questions uh you can write them in the comments below dre basically picks them out out of a hat and if he doesn't like your name or something you said, he won't pick it. But <laughs> if, if I you, can't say your name, but if you absolutely want to make sure that your question gets on the Kung Fu Genius podcast, join us on Patreon. The yes. link for that is in the description below. Whether you listen to us on YouTube or on audio platforms, uh, that link is always in the description. Always and we definitely appreciate your support because uh, the YouTube money that we get is like... Little it's to not none. even peanuts. You know, you know what's so funny? Uh, I, I was I was looking the other day, like, you know, because we get like just a little bit of ad revenue because, you know, uh, most of our episodes mm -hmm. get like a couple thousand views. We don't okay. have like, you know, we, we have a few outliers like the drug letters, the John Little interviews did really good. So there's like about four videos on mm -hmm. this channel that have like tens of thousands. And the drug letters, I think, is now 111,000 views. <laughs> um, but but th but that like for other YouTube channels, 111,000 views after two years is like re it's like pitiful, right? They get that amount yeah. of views like yeah. in two days, right? Right. right? And I was just looking because you can go in and see the the revenue that you earn from the individual videos. Okay. Oh. So just to give people a little bit of an idea of the baller money we are making from <laughs> even our most uh, successful video. Yeah. The Bruce Lee drug letters video, which is now at 111,000 views at, after about two years, I think that video just became two years old. Oh, um, has that earned a total from all the ad Happy revenue, birthday to the drug $398, $398 yes. over, total. Yes. Over the course of 24 months. Okay. So you have to understand, like if, if, I had made a, that, wow. if that video earned a uh, hundred or got 111,000 views in one month, instead of over two years, then I would have gotten almost, you know, $400 in one month in for one that month. one video, but yeah. I got $400 for them over the course of 24 <laughs> months. Okay. And that is oh. by far the best performing video we have. Mm -hmm. So then you have to imagine all the other videos, which are performed way 
way worse, yeah. have gotten a whole lot less over around the same amount of time. All right. So, uh, you know, thank we, you for putting that you, into perspective. Yes, exactly. So anyone, who, especially like there. the people who are like, yeah, man, just like yeah, hating on Bruce Lee for money or whatever. <laughs> it's okay. Look, I, I, $400 over 24 months is like about 20 bucks. Okay. <laughs> So, and if you live in New York City, the, that's not even my taking the subway train, okay. like, for one month. <laughs> like, and that, that was my big plan, to barely subsidize my subway for 24 months. Yeah, by, uh, it's, it's less Sapphire in um, Times Square and more AJ's in Secaucus. Wow. Strip club reference from my boys right here. Okay, so anyway. Uh, so <laughs> here we are for another Ask Me Anything episode, Dre. So let's get okay, to it. What you got okay, okay. So let's get to it with the awesome at now this is an at oh okay so it could be instagram no yeah. no but uh, uh no youtube i think now have they do the ads now because yeah, 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 they yeah, have yeah. to be part of the same club with everybody else and do right that. exactly exactly <laughs> that's right. a good american accent he just put there wow yeah you wow. what are you doing yeah that's <laughs> Yeah. Do that again from I, I, time I, I, to time. I, I, I love a, that. I have a student. Uh, her name is uh, Coco. You guys know Coco. And every once in a while, she would like try to do a Chinese accent. <laughs> but, uh, and and she, she is Chinese. And she's yeah. from China, right? Okay. And uh, <laughs> she has a Chinese accent. But then, but then she would like try to do a Chinese accent. <laughs> so and it was the worst Chinese accent it's you ever heard. Worst. And it's then the she goes back to talking normal and just yeah. has a Chinese accent. <laughs> and then she'll try a Chinese accent and it just sounds sounds you know like uh, it, like someone you know who's yeah. eating a hamburger trying to say something right and it's like that doesn't sound like a that chinese accent funny. at all now she spoke cantonese right yes yes she didn't she speak speaks, mandarin no she also speaks mandarin because she uh, she grew up in mainland china but she grew up in uh guangdong province in canton where they speak cantonese just on the it. mainland china side so most of the people who grew up in Can canton in mainland china mm -hmm. they have to speak mandarin because it's the official language it's what they do in school but they speak cantonese at home because they're still in canton mm. so there's still a, a huge cantonese speaking population in mainland china it's not only maybe. hong kong well maybe she was making fun of the mandarin speaking no, because it wasn't that one either. It was just like it, it was just like um, it's just like someone who cannot do any accent trying to do an accent yeah. that they coincidentally already have. All right, you know, uh, it's just it, it's like you you yeah. you have a, a, a very obvious New York accent having uh, grown up here, and, uh, and it would be like you try to do a New York accent. Hey, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, it's, going on <laughs> over there. But that's still pretty good. That that that's not exactly the comparison to, uh, no. to Coco's Chinese accent. Uh, I but like if I do Dick Van Dyke, you know what I mean? It's a jolly old day with Mary. <laughs> but see, I don't hear any difference to how he what? speaks to what he just oh, did right snap. there. <laughs> For me, that's the same. All right. Oh, blimey, Governor, knock it on the head, bag of sand. That's right. So, wow. Yeah, I mean, too, when I look his way back there doing all the audio engineering, I yeah. just see Dick Van Dyke in, uh, <laughs> in headphones. All right. Honey, when I look your way, I just see a dick. Wow. Wow. That was a solid that, bird, sir. That. All right, good. Good, good, good. Respect. Absolute respect. Okay. So uh, let's get to it, Trey. So what if you could transport back in time for a front row seat into the life and legacy of one of the most respected Wing Chun masters in history? Gong Sao Wang, a tribute. Direct students on Sifu Wong Sao Leung offers you just that. Through a series of exclusive conversations, 25 direct students share anecdotes, reflections, and personal stories offering in-depth understanding of the man behind the legend. Order your copy today across 12 Amazon marketplaces with free shipping. I absolutely love this book, and I think you'll find it an indispensable part of your collection. I can't recommend it enough get yours today go to amazon type in gong sao wong and there you go all right at petrosi dirupolus oh i like he always struggles with those 42 greek names. 32 yeah those greek names are rough yes boy. Yeah. man absolutely yeah okay bruce lee used isometrics to increase his strength without bulking up would you agree to a isometrics protocol let's say for chain punches where you maintain three fixed positions, beginning, middle, end, and then you execute a few explosive punches on the wall bag. Do you do any isometrics? Kindest regards from Greece, the British guy adds some noble European flavor to the podcast. Is 
and is greatly appreciated. Wow. Some noble Is European. this why you picked the banger? No, I didn't pick that because of that. I didn't even read the last part of the question. I just saw, oh, Bruce Lee and isometrics. I, li- I like that well, one. No, Go ahead and do that one. I agree. I agree. Right? He does add a bit of flavor to the podcast. A I different, also see, I also different see. So type that's how of I flavor. Sound it. <laughs> it adds a different flavor. Well, he's toning flavor. it down a bit. <laughs> different flavor. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, Mikey. Sometimes that accent's a little bit up. Over so, the top. Um, yeah, so How this is this you. is a great question. Um, so uh, I do isometrics occasionally. I don't do them as much as I should, but I've gone through periods where I did a lot of isometric training, mm-hmm. and then I'm currently in a period where I'm not doing it. However, I'm going to start doing them again next mm-hmm. week. Um, oh, yes, you already planned this. Yeah, I already planned this because uh, my my workout schedules um, mm-hmm. are based pretty much on my projects. So if I'm in a project where, let's say, I have to finish my book, okay, um, I know I'm going to have to spend X amount of time in front of the computer, and then I still have to teach. So then I have to create a workout schedule for that period that complements my workflow. And also, if I'm not teaching as much, because usually when I'm like pushing the books, uh, like working on them, I will lighten my teaching flow. So that also means I'm training less because a lot of my own training is, you know, training with my, I'm not just teaching my students. I'm also training with them when we do private training with me. I'm also chi sawing with them or, you know, sparring or being a bad guy or whatever. Um, So I then go, okay, well, I have to then make up for the lack of regular Wing Chun training in my training flow, right? And if I'm teaching a lot of Wing Chun, then my workout tends to be to improve my athletic abilities. And when I'm not teaching a lot of Wing Chun, my workout tends to be more to preserve my Wing Chun abilities. Hmm. You see what I mean? Like if I'm not doing a lot of Wing Chun, then my training has to keep my Wing Chun sharp. And if I'm doing a lot of Wing Chun, then my training is just going to focus more on my general athleticism. And this goes in ebbs and flows. And I think that's part of the secret is like to keep your training interesting, kind of look, don't think that you always have to train the same way every time. Now, there are people who do that, like machines, they have the same workout go to train the same days and that that totally works and that's totally fine just saying for me personally i go through like um ebbs and flows Mm -hmm. so right now because i'm going to be pushing uh work on my buji book i'm going to my training especially leading we have about six weeks before we go to hong kong um is going to be a very wing chun based just to keep my wing chun really really sharp Uh, while i'm doing this other stuff so um instead of doing a lot of regular strength training um, or classical weight training, I should say. I'm going to do more isometrics. And the reason why I got this idea um, is because my good friend, Dr. Kenneth J. Yeah. Actually just came out with an isometrics course, um, which is funny because this question. What? This question is a random question from one of our um, uh, you know, listeners. And, and it just happens to coincide. It's, I, it sounds almost, it sounds very shilly. Like yeah. he, here's the KFG being a, an, another YouTube shillionaire. <laughs> um, uh, here I'm shilling for Dr. Ken J. No, no, I didn't, I didn't discuss this with him at all. He's, he just came out with this program and, um, I'm, I'm, he, he gave me access to it so that I can test it. Okay. And um, anything Dr. Ken J does in regards to programming, uh, he also has like a, a weight cutting program for MMA athletes, which is amazing. Um, obviously, he's got his kettlebell stuff and, and his cardio code and everything like that. Um, he's an actual doctor of sports physiology. He's not just like some YouTube fitness YouTuber who's saying like, you know, drink apple cider vinegar and you'll lose 100 pounds a day, whatever. Like He's not that guy, right? <laughs> he's not that everything guy. Everything he does is... 100 percent science based he's okay. he tests everything in the lab and so he just gave me access to this isometrics course and i'm like wow this is actually perfect for me uh to do alongside my wing chun because my, my fitness training in the next six weeks is going to be almost purely wing chun based so my cardio besides going on the bike or using the rower is going to be like heavy bag and steps and punches training and wall bag and dummy and pull, and my strength training is going to be a lot of pole and knife mm-hmm. and isometrics training really fit the bill for this period that i'm going through in the next six weeks so what i'm going to do in addition to my regular wing chun training routines is i'm going to follow dr kenneth jay's isometrics routine 
for now until from now until I go to Hong Kong. So um, anything he does is really world class. I've done his other programs. He's like amazing. Um, if people want more information on his new isometrics course, uh, I would say go to his Instagram, which huh. is at Dr. Dr. Kenneth J at Dr. Kenneth J. And then he has in his bio, he's got a little link tree. So if you click on that, he's got all the different courses that he offers. Mm -hmm. And his new isometrics course is there, but you'll probably see the weight cutting one. You'll see his cardio code. So if you're interested in, in real cardiovascular training, uh, not just like what people call cardio, you know, oh, I'm doing cardio and they're jump roping for five minutes. And it's like, <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, no, you're warmed up now so you can actually do your real cardio, right? Um, <laughs> so he, this go. is actually like the real deal. So, um, uh, <clears throat> I would highly recommend getting that. So isometrics, as uh, most people know, and I don't want to butcher it because I am not the doctor of sports physiology, but basically, unlike a regular strength training or weight training, where mm -hmm. you know you you grab a weight and you know your muscle goes through like fully, uh, it's fully elongated, and then you go to a full contraction, and then you go like this. This is basically strength training without the muscle changing length. So you're not contracting mm -hmm. it or fully extending it. You're keeping it in one fixed position and then just pushing or pulling as hard as you can against a fixed object, mm. right? So meaning that no matter how hard you push, you're not going to move, unlike a weight which you can push and move. So what it seems, what seems to be happening is in this type of training where you're pushing or pulling against a fixed object with all of your power for a certain amount of time, usually like traditionally, of course, I haven't done the course yet, so I don't know exactly which method of, of programming is advocated in the course, but traditionally, at least the way I did it before, is you do everything, like he said, in three different positions, like a close, mid, and long. And then mm. you, you push as hard as you can, or you pull as hard as you can in one position, then a medium position, then a long position. So you hit the tendons and ligaments and muscles in those three different points. Because it's not a dynamic movement where you're pushing and going, like where your, your muscles are okay. changing length. Full it's, range. It's fixed, right? And Bruce Lee was very fond of this. There are a lot of photos. We talked about this uh, in way back in the day, I think episode 25 with... Uh, John Little about his uh, strength training methods, right? And there's all those photos of Bruce Lee with the, you know, he's got kind of like a weight rack and a bar and he's got a towel and he's pushing up full power and he's got the other one with the chain where he's pulling up full power. So Bruce was very much into isometrics, which makes sense because um, when whenever you see someone who's kind of skinny and wiry and they can seemingly punch way above their own weight okay the people always go like you know like how does this person have this like explosive powerful punch without having mass well it's secret internal chi no i'm just kidding uh no usually it, it's it's these people have a have very strong and thick tendons mm -hmm. so their tendon strength to muscle strength ratio is very very high Whereas, for example, in a lot of bodybuilders, not all, but many bodybuilders, because mm -hmm. their muscles are developed to such a high degree, the tendons haven't necessarily caught up. Because the problem with tendons is that they develop at a much slower rate than your muscles. So you can bulk up your muscles much more quickly than you can, say, yeah, strengthen tendons, your tendons. So, That's yeah. why when you have a tendon tear in your knee or something like that, it takes a while for it to fix because tendons don't have the same amount of blood flow that a muscle does. Mm -hmm. So if a, you get a muscle tear, you can that can repair much more quickly because there's enough blood and nutrients going there. If you get a tendon tear, it doesn't quite get the same amount of nutrients going there. Damn. And it's also a little bit more difficult to stimulate tendon strength than it is irregular muscle strength for like hypertrophy for getting bigger but it seems that one of the methods there are two main methods of which you can stimulate tendon strength now again i am not a sport <laughs> physiologist okay so if there's anything lacking or slightly off in my description yeah uh I'm I'm making that fully aware right now. Like I'm a Wing Chun Kung Fu instructor. You do who, play one on TV who, though. Who, who does all these different things, right? Uh, but I'm not the expert. So really, if you you want to have a scientific explanation of this, go to Wikipedia. No, no, go to Dr. Kenneth J. Um, but the idea is that there there are two two types of exercises. I love that, Wikipedia. That, that generally strengthen tendons over uh, traditional muscle strength, right, or uh, muscle development, and that is isometrics. 
So that is pushing or pulling against a fixed object with full power for different amounts of time in different positions and dynamic or ballistic exercises. So oddly enough, the two types of exercises yeah. that stimulate tendon training or tendon strength the most are the ones on the two opposite ends yeah. of the spectrum. Total. Either no movement, all right, so like pushing or pulling against a fixed object, or very rapid dynamic movement, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see in a lot of traditional martial arts training, it seems that our ancestors figured it out by trial and error. They didn't, they most likely did not know it through a scientific process, oh, but they man. knew that by doing things dynamically and by doing things more statically, that they developed a certain type of strength that gave them a stronger punch or kick or pull or something like that. So you see a lot of what would now be categorized as isometric kind of tendon training in traditional martial arts. They kind of figured it out through all the trial and error, but uh, like, but on the from Dr. Kennedy, you get it from the modern scientific side, right? So, hmm. so I'm going to be doing that course. So again, I recommend people go to Instagram, go to at Dr. Dr. Kenneth J, yeah. uh, and uh, go to his link tree there. And if you're interested in any of those other courses, uh, the cardio code course, if you really want to understand cardio and how to develop like an elastic you know, heart of, of elastic steel, uh, you go <laughs> oh, yeah. and do it. I mean, if, when, when you learn how to use, uh, you know, how to determine your um, uh, VO2 max and, and how mm -hmm. to push your, your ability to, you know, hit and move and push when you're really starting to dig deep, like that's the way to do it. So, so anyway, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing this tendon, uh, the, or I shouldn't say tendon, it's just isometrics course. Isometrics. Uh, it, as part of my training protocol for Hong Kong. When did you ever? Uh, when did you discover isometrics? I think the and first time. Try I, it. Uh, the first time I ever saw it was in Bruce Lee's fighting method. Yeah. Where there was like that photo of him doing that, mm -hmm. and then I uh, remember uh, I was a teenager yeah. and I saw a video from a, G, a very famous Jeet Kune Do instructor named Paul Vunak. Oh yeah. And uh, Paul Vunak, I don't remember. I used to buy like when I was a when I got my first job as a teenager. I was like 15, 16. <laughs> uh, and I started to earn a little bit of money. You know, back in those days when you wanted a video, you had to like write a check and send it by mail with the mail order slip. Wow. Do you remember those days? Yeah. yeah. So like you got to cut the thing out of the magazine. You got to <laughs> fill in your name. Yep. And then you got to send a check yes. with the right amount. And oh, I, man. I I remember I ordered like a bunch of. JKD instructional videos because mm -hmm. I was doing non-classical Wing Chun. I want to know a little bit more about JKD. It would take like JKD. four to six weeks to get there. Yeah, exactly. And you're waiting like, every oh, day. Oh, man. And, and I got, so I got a few videos from Paul Vunak. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one it was, but he actually, at the end of one of them, he shows like, you know, pushing against a wall in three different positions and he explained the isometric training. And that was actually the first time I had ever, like someone ever showed how to do it. So I have to say, like, I saw a photo of Bruce Lee, and that kind of piqued my interest. And then I randomly saw Paul Vunak explain in a video, and then I started doing that. Hmm. So uh, that was my introduction. And then did I, you like it? Yeah, I did in because it's easy. You don't need equipment. Yeah. And uh, and Doctor Kenneth, Doctor Kenneth J also has something called a power rep push up, okay. which is where you integrate. Uh, isometric holds into push-ups at three different heights where you have to overcome and come down. And it, it, one push-up in the three different heights and you're smoked. <laughs> you, you, you don't do 10 of these because you have to do, you have to hold yeah. and then you have to go down, overcome and push back. And one rep in your completely We actually dead. do that here. Yeah, it's time. amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So, um, yeah, great. So, so when it comes to that isometric training, I think one could do no wrong mm -hmm. uh, by going to uh, Dr. Kenji's course. So anyway, highly recommended. So what else you got for me, Drake? Next up, we got John Carl seven seventy two. Good. I guess okay. seventy three. I wouldn't answer. Yeah, yeah. We we don't want those seventy three years. Seven seventy threes. He killed the previous seventy one. Jesus. <laughs> like we used to say, because seventy two were already taken, right? <laughs> I always wonder what was going through Bruce's mind when he lost so much weight. Mm. For a man of his knowledge and intelligence, he must have known he was in dangerously unhealthy state. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's impossible to know for certain what goes on in the mind of someone else, right? Mm. But uh, for sure his, his rapid weight loss, uh, which seemed to accelerate uh, at the end of 72, uh, so be, uh, a few months before he did enter the dragon, where he was already pretty visibly skinny, 
Uh, he complained of three main ailments to Dr. Otto Au. I have the, I have the report from Dr. Otto Au, which yeah. was uh, sometime in November of 72. And there were three compla- complaints on there that he went to the good doctor for. All right. One was the profusive sweating under his armpits because Dr. Otto <laughs> Au was the one. Dr. Otto Au sounds like a dude at a... At a dealership, he, says, he sounds like a, he sounds like a character from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but it's not Ow like A U yeah. Chinese. It's uh-huh. like uh, O W. Yeah, Ow A O W W. Doctor Ow. He's like yeah. Doctor Payne, right? He's selling you the best cars. Yeah, in um, come to Doctor Auto Ow's <laughs> used car and you know rubber duck emporium, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> right. It's some kind of like weird shyster, right. right? Yeah. So when you look at the note, there were three complaints there. One was the sweating from mm-hmm. under his arms. The other one was the um, inability to keep weight on, and the other one was acne. All right. Hmm. Now, um, knowing what we know about uh, Bruce's cocaine habit at that time, I think it's pretty clear why Bruce was losing weight, and also the acne can also make a little sense in that context. Some people have accused Bruce Lee of taking steroids, um, but I think the fact that he literally could not keep even water weight on his body because uh, I'm not the steroid genius, uh, uh, <laughs> but I do read a, a lot about this kind of stuff. There was, yeah. as you know, when you, you, you've been around me for a bit, like I go into these rabbit holes. Oh, and yes. about two years ago, I, I was like really into watching like Coach Greg Doucette and uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates because uh-huh. they talk about PEDs and who's natty, who's not. And for me, it's interesting because like one, I just assume everyone is taking something. Okay. But then after watching their videos, I learned, uh, well, not everyone is taking something, but a lot of people are. And some people who are taking stuff, you can't tell. Who's natty, but you didn't know was natty. Natty. Uh, that's a good question because I haven't watched those videos yeah. in a little bit. Who's Natty? But uh, you were like, what? Oh, you know who's He's Natty? natty? You know who's She's Natty? natty? Who blew me away? The Rock. The Rock. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. That guy's, <laughs> not, that guy's the definition of not Natty. Get the hell out of here. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, but I, le- I learned a little bit about like, you know, because for me, it's a topic I know nothing about. Uh-huh. And so I'll just go into this rabbit hole. So like for a for like about a year and a half, I was learning about all the different PEDs, who's on it, who's not, how do these guys get, how do these guys pass those tests, like the USADA test. Mm-hmm. And so like I got a fair amount of info going through that rabbit hole, right? And then every once in a while, people like axiomatically say, oh yeah, Bruce Lee was taking steroids. And part of it has to do with uh, some stuff that Tom Bleeker wrote in his book, Unsettled Matters. Yeah. But if you read that, it's pretty clear that Tom Bleeker confuses corticosteroids with anabolic steroids. Corticosteroids is like cortisone for, for inflammation. All mm-hmm. right, the fact that it has the word steroid in it doesn't mean it's an doesn't mean... anabolic steroid, right. all right? right? I've also had cortisone shots in my too. feet, feet had from them. plantar fasciitis or in my shoulder before yeah. I had my surgery. Does that mean I've now taken steroids? Corticosteroids. You're on steroids, bro. Yeah, you're on steroids, bro. I'm on stop raging. And, and yeah, stop, stop anti-inflaming, bro. Uh, corticosteroids are anti-inflammatory in nature. Yeah. And Bruce seemingly was taking some anti-inflammatories for his back injury. And corticosteroids. And oh, steroids, Bruce, he was taking steroids. Uh, corticosteroids, bro. They, like, did you just see the word steroids in there and go like, you know, hey, bro, you, you taking drugs? Yeah, yeah. aspirin. All yeah, right, you know, yeah, right, right. It's right. like, you know, right. I went to the drugstore to get aspirin, uh, uh, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's just like, but, but it's, it's like on a once, the, level. once the thing is out there, people just repeat it without looking at it. Like when people say, Bruce Lee took steroids, you need only ask one follow-up question. Oh, uh, who's your source on that information? Well, you can tell by looking at you, who you can tell. When you, and, and I was corrected in real time. And people oh, can no go back and that. see. You can actually see the moment mm-hmm. where I go like, uh. Because uh, when I had John Little on uh, for episode, I think it was episode 25, where we talked about Bruce Lee's training plans and his physique, right? Mm-hmm. I was under the impression, because when you see Bruce Lee in Way of the Dragon, you know, when he's on the balcony and he does the lat spread yeah. and you look at just how... Jesus. Tight he was, right? And then you go, yeah, this Bruce Lee is a little bit different than, say, the Bruce Lee from Green Hornet. Because when you look at photos of Bruce Lee with his shirt off in the 60s, he was fit and in shape, but he didn't seem like that. No, kind of like, he wasn't, wasn't like completely striated, right? Hmm. Well, it turns out I was under the impression 
that Bruce must have bulked up quite a bit um, when he made those movies. And then also, obviously, and I, I mean bulked up in terms of muscle strength. I mean, I don't mean bulk up in terms of weight. All right, because when people talk about bulking, they, they usually most people go, yo, I'm going to bulk, weight. and then I'm going to cut. You know, it's like, oh, so you're going to get really fat uh, and then lift and then, weights and then have to lose all that fat? <laughs> bulking is the biggest bunch of bullshit when it comes to weight training, right? Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, you just, you're going to get fat and then have to lose that fat. Well, how, how about just gain muscle incrementally rather than eating a bunch of stuff, getting fat, and then thinking this is magically going to convert to muscle because you're lifting weights now. Um, <laughs> you're just going to have muscle under layers of fat, right? Oh, damn. So I thought that Bruce Lee had physically changed in size from, say, like the late 60s to the early 70s. And mm. then John Little was like, no, he actually didn't at all. And then he showed me a photo of Bruce in, let's say, 1968, mm -hmm. and then a photo of Bruce around the time of Big Boss and... and and when you look at Bruce's body, you go, oh, yeah. No, actually, there is no size difference. Bruce always had those V-lats. And there are even early photos of him as like a teenager where he does the lat spread and you see he's got it. He's not as tight because he's got a little baby fat in his teen years. But you see, oh, he's got the lat spread. Those are his genetics. And then you look and you go, there's no weight difference really between Bruce in those in that time and let's say the time of his early films. He starts losing weight towards the end of his career, most likely because of his insane work schedule coupled with a pretty sizable cocaine habit. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't like Bruce went from like, like some of these fitness influencers. He wasn't like a buck 20 and then suddenly he was a buck 60. Yeah, no. And then you would go like, oh, okay, yeah, he's definitely taking some shit. Um, if you take someone who kind of is low in body fat to begin with, and they start lifting weights and then they're in a period like of their life where they're in Hong Kong where it's very hot, they're working and they don't have a lot of body fat on them. You get that look of Bruce Lee with his genetics for his lats and stuff like that. That is not really the look of someone who took steroids. But there's, there's kind of a thing um, which I get because a lot of celebrities are on steroids. A lot of celebrities are taking, and mind you also PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, are not only steroids. There are other PEDs like what Lance Armstrong took, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like uh, the, the, there's stuff that, like there's blood doping to get more oxygen into your blood, like so you can do more, like you can push further. Yeah. Like PEDs is not just steroids, right? Wow. But the thing is that there's, there's no evidence that Bruce took steroids from any of his body change. Um, there's no evidence in terms of his body composition changing besides becoming more lean, which is normally not what steroids do to you. <laughs> steroids usually uh, make you retain water, especially the steroids from the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And I know all this from like going down a rabbit hole of Greg Doucette and Derek with yeah. more plates, more dates. So Bruce, I think, would have gotten puffy if he took steroids. He wouldn't have been constantly losing weight and not mm -hmm. actually have more muscle on his frame. The difference in those later films is you could just see more of the muscle. Yeah. But as you know, when we went to the Bruce Lee exhibit in Hong Kong, Yo. they had Bruce's clothes on a mannequin. That there. was freaky. He was tiny. That was freaky. Yeah, you look 20, at him. 22 inch waist? With 27 inch waist. 22 uh, inch waist. Yeah, okay, like, that'd what? be a little too freaky. 24 inch <laughs> waist on my pythons. <laughs> yeah, on my pythons. <laughs> no, but, you, but you, you look at his his clothing on a mannequin, and I'm 5'7", yeah. same height, and you look at it, his yeah. shoulders are like so narrow. Yeah, could you and imagine you just, trying to fit in what, what you don't realize is when you see him, it's like he's not a physically imposing guy, which we all know he was 5'7", but even when he's doing all of this, if he was standing next to you, mm -hmm. he would have an impressively chiseled physique, but he wouldn't have been physically imposing. Where you yeah. don't look at him and go, like, this is a big dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's amazing. And, and so this kind of steroid accusation is kind of weird. And then, and, and then so you look then... He has a rapid weight loss at the end of his life. At the time when his, you know, we, we know now from his complaints of rapid weight loss and the Bob Baker drug letters mm -hmm. that this coincides with the ramping up of his cocaine use because of the dates on the letters. Yeah. He was using it a little bit and then it seemed he took a little break and then it seemed he started really pushing it, right? Where towards the end of his life, he's asking for $500 worth of cocaine and $73 on one shipment, on one monthly shipment, right? Damn. So this $73 is, is probably about no, no, seven. In, in 1973 yeah. dollars, I think someone did the math. It's, it's a like, few thousand bucks. Yeah. Right? So um, 
to answer this question here, I'm pretty sure Bruce was aware that he that there was something wrong. He had mentioned to his mother that he wouldn't live much longer, like he wouldn't have a very long life. It seemed like he had even said some things to Linda, thinking like, oh, I don't think I can keep this up. I don't know how much longer I can do this. And given what we know about his horrific mm. uh, May 10th collapse, which let's just be clear here, it was an overdose. It was not heat stroke. <laughs> it was, and I know people, they, they don't like that. Hypo it was very clearly an overdose, okay? Very clearly. All right. And uh, it seems that he kind of knew his time was up mm -hmm. um, and his behavior was getting more and more erratic. So, yeah, he was an intelligent guy. I think deep down inside, he knew he was playing with fire. His days were known. And, and I, I think he, I think he did know it was coming. So I think I think whereas some people might say, hey, maybe I need to back up or back off a little bit. I think he was just, screw Too it, far. push the pedal and go. <laughs> now, do you think he was surprised when he woke up every morning at this point? He's just like, oh, Yeah, I know, because I'm pretty sure he was expecting Another one morning day. to wake up dead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to wake up dead. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, wow. we, uh, Bruce kept pretty uh, accurate day timers in terms of what he was doing, but he didn't really, he didn't have a diary that we know of. Mm. So it's very yeah, difficult to know, like, what, yeah, with, with, the, the, with the exception personal of some thoughts. of his personal letters, which he wrote to some people, which sometimes give a little bit of an influence mm -hmm. or a little bit of an insight into what was going on in his mind. No, I don't, I'd be really very curious. I mean, his, his body was literally wasting away. I just saw a photo that was taken in late June of 73, so less than a month before he dies, he was on the set of a film with his shirt off and sunglasses on in, in, indoors. And uh, body just looks like it's wasting away. Like, it, it's... Damn. Yeah. I, 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 I would go so far as to say I, that m from May mm -hmm. to his death in July, all right, of 73... I would say those were bad months for Bruce Lee. Uh, it, and he's it's not trying like it's, to put it, on weight, right? He's well. He went to the doctor complaining yeah. about it, and the doctor. But it, it's very clear the doctor note. It's very clear Doctor Otto Al was not told about the cocaine use. So it's like Bruce probably knew why he was losing all that weight, but went to the doctor like, "Hey, doc, I'm losing weight. What can I do?" Mm. It's like, well, why are you losing weight? Well, I don't know. It must be my work. And, and it seems from the doctor's note that the doctor just thought he's losing weight because of his insane work schedule. Like maybe he's not eating enough for the amount of calories that he's burning every day, mm -hmm. doing choreography, running around, having meetings, doing all this stuff. And he's maybe not eating enough. So the doctor basically prescribed rest and eat more. But mm. it seemed like... <laughs> If Dr. Otto Au knew about his cocaine use, there'd be a third <laughs> suggestion on there. Stop <laughs> using cocaine in all caps. Uh -huh. um, rest and, and eat more. Yeah. Um, but it just seems in that, that Dr. Otto, I like Bruce, very slickly avoided this bit of information. Maybe he was thinking, yeah, he knows he's losing weight because of cocaine, but maybe the doctor has some, some way that, remedy you know, yeah. But maybe in 1973 in Hong Kong, there was no GNC where you could just go in there and buy weight gain, bro. <laughs> do you even I don't weight know. Gain, do you bro? even weight gain, bro? Uh, so and then he could get fat like Cartman and Billy. I'm totally buff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, who knows? But uh, given what was going on in Bruce mm -hmm. Lee's life from May to July, so the collapse, the pulling of the knife on low way, the, in, <laughs> oh, the yeah. you know the the when he had the interview and then he like you know he hit the the reporter trying to show his palm strike and then it ended up, it was a martial arts demonstration, but it ended up looking like he was just kind of smacking the shit out of a, some TV show host or whatever. Right. And then the press totally getting on his ass for that. Um, and then he still had the fallout for not going to Yip Man's funeral. And then the, I, I May, June Damn. and July were not happy months. I, 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 it's, it's pretty clear that Bruce, wasn't really enjoying his fame and then it just suddenly he just suddenly died it seems that he was kind of in a bit of a spiral in those mm. especially in those last three months i i uh from what we know of course we're still missing like a direct insight into exactly what but it just seems there's a preponderance of evidence that bruce was in a bit of a spiral in those three months so uh yeah Poor all guy. right what else you got for me
Hey, Kung Fu Genius fans, if you like what we do here, please consider supporting us on Patreon. For as little as five bucks a month, you'll get early access to episodes and other goodies not posted on the Kung Fu Genius channel. With higher levels of support, you can get your name in the description, a live chat with me, or at the baller level, you even get your own personal KFG episode with me as my guest. The link to our Patreon page is in the description of this episode below. Patreons have a direct link to chat with me and get first dibs on any questions for Ask Me Anything episodes. Click on the link in the description for our Patreon page for more information, and I'll see you on Patreon. All right, let's go into Rune Hawk 2012. Let's do oh, it. This is an at. Yeah, this is, this is an at, people. This just is to an make at. Sure you, in case, you know. Yeah. C for Alex. Bruce Lee's nunchucks from the Green Hornet just sold at an auction for 12 thousand five hundred dollars wow would these nunchucks be the first ones ever seen by a western audience yeah and would these have been the first set bruce ever owned thanks oh, that's great uh, was that is that david mail david mail known as rune hawk 2012 Oh, okay, all right. I, th I thought he wrote there at the bottom some something alluding to who it was, because I think this is m one of the guys who's coming on our Hong Kong trip. I believe, yeah. Yes. I, yes. I've seen that in the comments, but yes. it's not here. It's not this one. Okay, all right. Might um, be him. So that is, that's a good question. So um, mm -hmm. this might be a better question for like a Charles Damiano or Hector mm -hmm. Martinez or something like that, um, because I'm not... Um, of all things Bruce Lee, I'm not like the collector nerd, oh. you know, because there are guys there oh. that'll say like, oh, yeah, like, you know, the Bruce's, you know, the one of two blue suits Bruce Lee wore in Enter the Dragon <laughs> went, went on auction in 93 in the Tadman auction was sold to Jeff. Like there are people who know like all that stuff. And like mm -hmm. I'm uh, I. Uh, if I had an extra twelve thousand five hundred dollars burning a hole in my pocket, I wouldn't yeah. have bought a pair of Bruce Lee nunchucks if I had. $100,000 burning a hole in my p pocket, I would have bought a $12,500 yeah. nunchucks. Bruce. Right, right. So, uh, it's so numbers I, game. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I wouldn't yeah. buy it. It's yeah. just a matter of like <laughs> how much, how much extra money do yeah. I have that I could justify something like uh -huh. that, right? Uh, I would assume yeah. that Bruce Lee, I, I remember that I think it was an episode where Bruce Lee did some nunchucks on uh, Green Hornet. I would imagine that's the first time that weapon was ever shown to a Western audience. However, hmm. I'm not a film nerd. Um, if there's anyone who knows, maybe you can write in the comments below if nunchucks were ever shown on a film. It was certainly, I mean, certainly not on TV. It must have been the first time. Uh, <laughs> True. But, but, you know, I don't know if there's an old Bond movie yeah, or there's yeah, some, right. you know, James Cagney when he's <laughs> doing his judo. Someone smack knows. the dude with a pair of chucks yeah. or something like that. Um, I would assume they James probably. Cagney? Yeah, well, yeah, because he. he ah, she. Jesus. Get out of here. Speaking of fake accents. <laughs> and he pulls up. I'm gonna crack you across the face. See. <laughs> Keep the change, filthy animal. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Be wild. Yeah. That'd so anyway. So wild. That would, I, I would, someone should do that as a skit. <laughs> Oh, His, please. Historical moments in film regarding martial arts. Did you know that James Cagney used a nunchucker <laughs> to hit a newspaper boy across the face for giving him the wrong change? Newspaper boy! In 1935s. With his shorts. Yes. With his cool out shorts. That's dope. Uh, oh, yeah, so I would assume those, it was probably the first time that was ever shown I, to a Western oh, audience. I don't know if that was the first pair Bruce about owned. Or, yeah. uh, because the whole lore of how did Bruce Lee learn nunchuck? Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few Dan, different right? stories. That's well, what they well, say. Uh, th there's a story that Steve Golden learned them in, in Okinawa and uh, when he was stationed over there. And then when he came back, knowing mm -hmm. Dan Asanto, Steve Golden kind of showed Dan Asanto. Then Dan Asanto showed Bruce Lee. Uh, then there's the story from Mito Yohara that uh, Bruce Lee was just thumbing through the books at uh, um, Ohara Publications and then saw... 
I guess Fumio Demuro's nunchuck book, but I don't know timeline wise how that works out because I don't know if that book was before then. Mm. Uh, that you know, so I would assume maybe it's probably a composite of both stories. Like Dan and Santo could have introduced him. Bruce sees the Fumio Demura book a few years later at O'Hara and like copies a bunch of movements from there, whatever, and could pick it up. Cordy and Mito Yohara, like Bruce looked at the book and picked up everything quickly, but that doesn't mean that that was the first time that he had ever had nunchucks in his hands. The, the funny thing is that everyone. There, there's like in the states, you know, everyone wants to claim that they're somehow responsible for something Bruce Lee did or or knew or could you know, you know Chuck Norris is the first guy to show Bruce Lee high kicks, which is like well he's on video doing high kicks years before he even met Chuck Norris. Oh, damn. So this idea that Chuck Norris or June Reed damn, Chucky. taught him about high kicks as if Bruce Lee had never seen a high kick in his life until he <laughs> came to the States and met June Reed or whatever. Now, was it possible June Reed gave him some tips on to how to do a lead leg round kick mm -hmm. or hook kick or whatever? Sure. But that doesn't mean that he was the first, he was his teacher in kicking. Yeah. Did, did Chuck Norris maybe show Bruce how he did a spinning kick? And then Bruce maybe took one or two ideas from that, just like he watched Luis Delgado mm -hmm. doing his kicks and he filmed it and he even used that in exact sequence in Enter the Dragon. I put Bruce Lee onto Johnny Walker. Exactly. He's, right? he's drinking Johnny Walker. That's why. Cousin That's, yeah, it makes sense, yeah. right? Everyone wants to claim it. Do you know how many of Yip Man's students claim they're the ones that introduced Bruce Lee to, to <laughs> Yip Man? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like right. that, that's, it's, it's like a traveling trophy of Yip Man students, whether it's William Chang or Duncan Lang or Chris Chang or any of these guys all everyone introduced bruce lee to yip man all right Damn. so much so that yip man must his head must have been spinning like yo man <laughs> i've already <laughs> met this guy all right met this guy 10 people times keep, people keep bringing and, and what does bruce not realize they can't people keep bringing him to the same guy all right <laughs> What? Duncan Lang, William Chang, Hawkins Chang, Chris Chang. Yeah. You know, I don't know if Hawkins Chang ever claimed that, but like, but there are a number, and that's just a small list. That is so funny. You know, and it's like, can you imagine like Yip Man is waiting uh -huh. there and someone brings in Bruce Lee? Hey, Sivo, look uh -huh. at this guy. He's like, yeah, I met him. I, I know him. him. And I even know his father. All right. Uh -huh. yeah. We're opium den smoking buddies. Uh -huh. Like, like it was, why it was, is it, what's it with this? It was Everyone Bruce Lee's claimed dad that introduced. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so like. Yeah. It's like people need to have these connections and they will kind of draw it together no matter how spurious it is. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, I was the one that told Bruce Lee to lift up his wrist when he did the Wing Chun punch. It's like everyone wants to claim to have something like without them, there would be no Bruce Lee. Yo. So it's uh, yeah, it's always a little funny. Damn. Though. All right. So what else you got for me? What else we got? We got we got. At Robert James 2023. All right, there we go. I like these years. Yeah. Everyone got their year. Yeah. You got a year. 200, no, 2022 of them were already taken. That's why. <laughs> it's, it's not the year. It's just COVID. They were all dead. They were all dead. There can be only one. Okay. Love the show. Thank you. We'll definitely watch the Ninja episode. Oh, because I recommended that uh, on one of the Mikey episodes. Yeah. I think the Ninja episode is one of the most underrated ones. I think and so I too. reminded people, not only do you and I talk about Ninja Cannon movies, oh. but I had just had my shoulder surgery. My arm is in a sling. And I am high <laughs> as a kite on all. I'm still on the medicine I had yeah. from the hospital. Woo. All right. And I don't know what possessed us to do Woo. an episode so fresh. quickly. You were fresh from if, the hospital. If you watch that episode, yeah. man, I am like on another planet. <laughs> oh, because man. I had like this. All the, they had like, there's like a medicine pack in there that's yeah. like putting pain meds in me. And I'm just like, ah, ninjas. And then he boinked his wife. <laughs> right? <laughs> like that. Out. And then, of course, because that was very early on and we didn't have our groove yet. I think if we had done that episode now, way more people would watch it. Uh -huh. But that was very early on and people just wanted me to talk about Bruce Lee. Go back and watch the ninja yeah. episode from season Make one. Make a KFG Clips episode of the ninja episode. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, yeah Andrew. Yeah. So, the question... Question, what do you think of New York Ninja? Oh. Now, that yes. is an awesome question because that movie follows me everywhere. Okay, so this is crazy. Yeah. So I have actually not seen New York I Ninja. I haven't seen okay. it in I its entirety. Seen it either. Yes. I, I have so, existed. Okay, wait. Yes. 
We all three of us have not seen it. Ooh. I propose that we see it together. Oh, and do an episode. Exactly. Yes. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Because Let's do that. If it follows me, every, I, I'll turn on TV and it's there. Yes. But I can't watch it. Or because it's awful. It's no. <laughs> at the moment, I can't sit down. I'm not in this position oh, yeah, to not, sit down just not in and a watch it to yeah. watch it. Yeah. Okay. okay. We got to do a mystery science theater style. Yes, I think oh, that'd be great. Yes. So, so here's what I know about it. First of all, the movie is so notoriously bad. Even Red Letter <laughs> Media did yeah. an episode on New York Ninja. Oh. Like the big YouTube channel, I Red Letter Media, that. they they always like bash all the yeah. big movies. Right? Uh, they'll bash like shady films as well. They did an episode on it, and I believe it stars John Liu. Whoa, <laughs> who's a um, an, wow. uh, a Hong Kong actor? I'm yeah. like, I think he's actually from Taiwan. He's a Taekwondo guy, like an amazing kicker. I think he was a student of um, Tan Tao Liang, he's the brother who's like a of status, f- famous uh, status quo. How dare you, <laughs> brother of status. You know a lot of Hong Kong Chinese guys take some kind of funny names, like Chinese take some funny Western names. Can you imagine if you have the name Quo, and then you take the Western name Status? And then what's your name? Status Quo? I bet it'd be rocking all over the world. Yeah, or they take the name Quid Pro. Oh, God. Oh, God. Quid Pro Quo. All right. Someone uh, always wants something from you. Exactly, yes. right? So he's a... You know what's interesting is mm-hmm. if you look at uh, uh, Sifu Lang Teng's... Uh, big Wing Chun book, Wing Chun Kun, right? Mm. The big one, the hardcover. And he does what a lot of uh, Kung Fu writers in those days did. If you look at any like Kung Fu book from the 70s and 60s, or I shouldn't say any, but many of them, the first few pages are all these like shout outs from other Kung Fu Sifus. Oh, right. It's almost like kind of like, you know, it's like some famous Sifu saying like, you know, buy this book. It's awesome. And the next page, it's like a photo of the author with some famous Sifu like, Sifu Lang Ting is the greatest thing since sliced right bread. Right in the right? beginning. And right in the beginning, it's Not like this, the, before and, social media, that yeah. was your friends list. Right? Oh, That was yes. your flex right there, right? <laughs> and in the front of... The Wing Chun Kun book. He has this like he has a page from each of these like different sifus and famous people congratulating him on his Wing Chun Kun book, which is like oh, a funny wow. thing to put in your own book. People congratulating <laughs> you about your own book. Yeah, uh, and he has Ron Van Cleef. Like he's oh, got yeah. a photo of Ron Van Cleef signed the Black by him. Dragon. And he has this really crazy photo of John, John Liu doing this like really sweet flying kick. And it's like, you know, to Master Leung Ting, like, you know, from your good friend, John Liu, Master of Zen Kwon Do. So apparently, uh, John Liu created his own style called Zen, Zen Kwon Do. Kwon Do. And I think he was a student. Sounds I think he was a student dope. of Tan Tao Lang. Tan Tao Lang is a Taiwanese based Taekwondo guy who went to Hong Kong and did films and was in a, one of the best leg kickers ever. It's like, mm. Uh, I think his nickname was Flashlegs Tan or something like that, which sounds like, a, sounds like a Flash strip dancer. club. Yeah. yeah, sounds like a strip club. Yeah. Flashlegs, right? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he's like a kicking. really phenomenal kicker, but mm-hmm. uh, maybe not the best actor. Mm. And so I guess that happens a lot. I guess some kind of production company decided to take John Liu at the height of his, you know, B level fame in Hong Kong. And uh, do a um, film here in New York called uh, New York Ninja. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know what the backstory is. The film has to have a backstory because yeah. it seemed that the film didn't have the budget that they thought it was going to have. <sighs> and it ends up being one of the most low budget turkeys you've ever seen. Yeah. But apparently it's one of those watchably bad movies. It's, it's like comedic. it's so awful. Yeah. It's watchable. And I always turn it, and it's always at the same part. Oh, yeah. Isn't that weird? That happened to me, too. Especially back in the days when used to, they used to show regular movies on yeah. TV. Mm-hmm. And, like, they would show The Last Dragon on, like, you know, right. on, like, Channel 11, yes. right? With, like, edited for yeah. TV with oh, commercials, no. right? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. that's, that's and totally And you always wild. turn on, is that the... Uh, the dance scene or something. Yeah, exactly. It's a, the, the, the debar it's like, scene. Uh, it's the, the rhythm of the night yeah, scene, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah why can't it be the end fight scene? Right. It's always like the corniest scene yeah, in the yeah. movie, right? Uh, yes. Jeez. So um, I propose we do watch New York Ninja. ASAP. 
uh, because uh, it just looks so crazy. That would be really fun. I think we should do more movie-based episodes. Like, yeah. um, you haven't seen it yet because it hasn't come out at the time of this recording. Ooh. But at the time that this episode finally comes out, it would have already come out. But the came out. But the last episode we recorded yesterday yeah. with Mikey Dean. Okay, we did a Bruce Lee versus Bruce Lee thing where we took who is the strongest of all of his five characters. And if they all fought each other, which one would be the king of the hill? And Ooh. then I did an extra, because it was based on a question from one of our uh, listeners named Chris Bach. Uh, I did one extra. I said, okay, what if we took each of the five characters uh -huh. and then put them against the villains of the other four movies? How would they fare? Mm. You know, like, so how would Cheng Chao from Big Boss fare against like Han or fare against yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something like that, Spoiler right? Spoiler alert, he lost all of his fights. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, it's not spoiler alert now because that episode has already come out. But, uh, <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, but right, I, right. I kind of like those episodes. Like, I love doing the AMAs, the Ask Me mm -hmm. Anything, because it gives us a broad range of topics to talk about. But I actually like having one topic to talk about, like, for the whole episode, because yeah. we can really go into it. So I think, like, a New York Ninja would be good. I think some movie Ninja. reviews would be good. If we're going to do New York Ninja, I have to open with, like, a reading of, like, half a chapter of The Amorous Adventures of Ashida Kim. No, I think The Amorous Adventures of Ashida Kim is its own episode. Oh, wow. Well. We can do, we can do a whole fake ninja we episode can. of the 80s, right? We can. Except Tashida Kim's not a fake ninja. I won't allow that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. So, um, yeah, let's watch New York yeah. Ninja. Let's do to. it. Let's yeah. do that next um, time. By the way, if anyone has recommendations about... Yeah. Um, uh, non ask me anything episodes like uh, so like what is a topic we could do a whole episode on mm -hmm. and anything and if it's a movie tell us the movie yes or don't just be like do a movie review right like tell us <laughs> the movie yeah. you want us to do uh, if there's one topic well not a review I would think a commentary commentary Live. or like a, what do we think oh, no, well that's yeah. a little bit different then because then we, we could do a commentary well, it's track. our twist but a commentary, commentary track would not really be a, like a proper podcast episode it has mm -hmm. to be us like reviewing this or whatever so yeah. let, let let me know like we'll mm -hmm. definitely do new york ninja yeah let me know if there are any other films you want me to do and also any other topics you want us to burn an entire episode on one topic true just put that in the comments below so we have to do a slightly short one today because I have to do no. a uh, I have to do a um, a live theory class today. So I think what time? We, we, no, we can do about ten more minutes straight. Okay. So go ahead and give me the best uh, questions for the next ten minutes. Yeah, for just a ten minute one though, right? So don't pick one you're like, oh, this looks like a good one, and then it turns out to be a forty five minute topic. True. Yeah, that. exactly. True that. Yeah, Dre's true always that. good at that. Yeah. Give me give me something I can fill ten minutes with, and then he's like, all right, let's discuss the nuance of the histories of Wing Chun. All right. Just let and me the various let me, competing stories. All let right? me scroll a little. Yeah, let's oh, see. Let's oh see him no. scroll. Uh oh, no, no, no. you know what it means when they're scrolling. Yeah, scrolling. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, but there I, could be a doctor question in there. There could be a, a famous a one a person with one name. I'm just trying know, to like find. A Madonna. A, yeah, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but every time he says that, I get a certain amount of existential dread. Yes, like just it's like all I'm doing I, is looking yeah, for I, a question that would fit that 10 minute frame yeah, oh, yeah. nine minutes of a dryson rambling <laughs> <laughs> and you being like and you go, no no and that's all i gotta say about that right all right let's go let's do it all let's right do ne it. next question is cinematic tendency at oh. cinematic tendency i've been on his show before yeah and yeah, he follows us on instagram as well he's asking what's up what what's next about dre i don't know what is people next join in city wing chun because of dre I don't know what that means. <laughs> Yo, oh, talk, uh, because I made a comment that one of the new students, uh, George, uh, came up to me and he was like, oh man, like I always miss, I haven't met Dre yet. And he's saying okay. that to me, I'm like, Yo, bro, I'm the Kung Fu genius. <laughs> Will you, <laughs> you care you about Dre? Me? Yeah. Yes, apparently you're more popular than me. Uh, but that's like kind of weird. Imagine like hanging out at uh, Johnny Carson's house and being pissed off you didn't see Ed McMahon. <laughs> 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 Has that ever happened? Can you imagine like talking he, to Johnny? You just keep going to Johnny like, Carson's house? Yeah, yeah exactly. Every day. And he's telling you all these wild stories about yeah. all these shows he's oh, done man. And, and interviewing yeah. this guy, whatever. And you go like, yeah, Yo, you know what? You know, it's kind of bugging me. Like, I haven't uh -huh. met Ed McMahon yet. Yeah, it was. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That yeah. is classic. 
That is classic. Yeah. Does anyone who listens to the KMG podcast even know who Johnny Carson or right. Ed McMahon are, right? <laughs> We're really going into they those. Will yeah. Th- right, those they will now. You're hanging out with Conan O'Brien, and you're uh, like, hey, dude, where's Andy Richter? Yeah, Although yeah. I would say I, I want to meet Andy Richter. I would too. Andy Richter once uh, liked one of my tweets. Um, because I said something about like something about the Richter name because we have the same name. Oh, and uh, no, I, 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 yeah. I tweeted like something like, "Oh yeah," and like so uh, people have asked me if I'm related to Andy Richter. Okay, and then so I tweeted that and I kind of at him or whatever, and he mm-hmm. liked the tweet. I thought that was pretty That's dope. That's really cool. Um, but That's no, I'm not funny. related to um, Andy Richter. Andy Richter is pretty. He's funny really too. funny. I like Andy yeah. Richter. Right? No, you're, oh, but I think, you're related to that Richter guy from uh, Total Recall. You see what the poly Richter? Yeah. No, I'm 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 related to the earthquake guy from the Richter scale. <laughs> Stop. Why is that? Yes, yes. But Why? I don't know. Is is Why? Dre the Andy Richter of the KFG podcast, or is he the Ed McMahon? Uh huh. That's or just every a once in a while chimes in. Ha ha. Yes, sir. That's a good question. Like, and then doesn't say anything for another ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else you got for me, Dre? Uh, next up, we got Dreisen. Oh, my oh, come on. You, you snuck it in. You snuck it. You, he, he, did, he did a question sandwich. He like did a that, question sandwich. Did you just press a button? Was, yeah. Did, like, did he press a button? Like, what's <laughs> happening that right button now? You I'm just waiting to hear something. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was sneaky. That was <laughs> sneaky. It was not cool, bro. Okay. All right. What does Dreisen have Dreisen is asking a hypothetical. <laughs> so... <laughs> so <laughs> So you hear teaching, you finish, you like, oh, this gig, this gig, kick my ass, man. Yeah, wait, <laughs> this does not sound like something someone wrote. It's right here. I'm it's reading right it. Here. Like, yeah, reading it's it. right here. He says it's a Dreisen hypothetical. Looks at me right in the eyes and starts going like, yeah, and starts talking without looking there. And yet I'm meant to I'm believe somehow it. this is this has been written in the questions. So you're finished teaching a private lesson. <laughs> See Doing how the he's same like thing. gesticulating, just like so. He's now looking at the screen to really sell it, and I'm and pretty sure the words are a little bit different than the first time he said it. You, you're really, you're really beat. You're really beat because of that that student, right? He's he's a banger, and now wow. you're like, okay, I got to get out of here. What does yeah. that even mean? I got to get out of here. Like you leave the school, okay? And you're like, wow. Whoa, whoa. You come out again. He's not looking. You come out right. the door. And he's you come even out making the door. facial expressions you as come if out that the was door. written in I'm the reading. question. It's right here on the screen. <laughs> you come outside, and the sky is straight orange reddish, and you're like, and everyone's looking at the sky. Wow. Right. At, in awe. Mm-hmm. It's like a sunset, mm-hmm. but it's not sunset hour. It's just strange. Uh huh. And it does uh, sound familiar, though. Oddly yeah. enough, everyone is walking around in bikinis, like <laughs> bikinis, briefs, and bikinis. Everyone on the street, okay, straight wearing. Look, so basically, I don't exactly know. what happened the other day when we had all that orange smoke from Canada. Yeah, it's, 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 it's wildfires, yeah. right? Yeah, wildfires. Yeah. Yeah. wildfires yeah. So New York, New, the, all of New York smelled like burnt barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the train. The train's not working. Yeah, that's every day in New yeah. York. You said, you know, I got to order an Uber. Uh huh. You're you know, just making F, this shit F, up as you go along. No, I'm reading it. F all this. <laughs> you say that. F all this. I'm <laughs> ordering an Uber. I'm done with this waiting, looking at all these bikinis everywhere. This doesn't sound like me at all. Like so, you. <laughs> so, 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 Uber pulls up. You get in. Dude turns. He's like, Alex? And you're like, yeah, are you. Are you Danny? He's like, hey, yeah, I'm Danny, Danny. All right, get in. And he pulls off. Wow, that's mm, a bit rude. Right? It's, it's, a red, it's a red BMW. I mean, a red Mercedes. And you're like, whoa, this is an odd car for an Uber. He's like, yeah, it's a classic. So you just, mm, you're just driving. And you, you're looking at him strange. You're like, wait. No, this can't be. This cannot be. His name was Dan. He said his name was Dan. He said his name was Danny. Uh huh. And you're looking. He has shades and he's a hat. It's our grappling training dummy, Danny, driving the car. Hat, shades, and you're just like, oh no, no, no. no, It's it's Michael. Never mind. It's Bruce (laughs) Lee. In 
straight shades cap like this. <laughs> trying, trying to keep it low key. Okay, has but he, you know it's him. Has he? Has this Bruce Lee aged you, from yes. 1973? So it's it's uh it's, it's David Henry Huang in disguise. <laughs> Now you're only going home, right? Mm. Which is maybe what? Don't give away how where many, I live. How many minutes? 30 minutes? Let's say 30 minutes. Don't give away where I live. Do you change the destination to like Pennsylvania, Kansas, so you can go a little further? What do you do? Do you keep to the spend ride? More time you with know Bruce it's Lee. him now. Now you know it's you're, you're, you know. And he, con- he, he, Confirms it. He confirms it. Yeah, he confirms it's the point it. Point of having a disguise, and you, then you go, "Yeah, well, Bruce Lee." No, he, <laughs> you you ask him a few questions. Uh-huh. He confirmed it. Okay. And but now he knows you know. Uh huh. Do you change the location, or do you go straight home, which is almost ten minutes away now? Um, I have a feeling if Bruce Lee, for whatever reason, was driving a taxi <laughs> and he picked no me a up, Uber, an Uber, okay. Not a taxi, not a yellow taxi. It's the difference. Uh, it's the okay. difference. Uh, hold your horses, Tom. Big difference. Oh my God. Jesus. My God. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 like uh, it's like I confuse. It's like me confusing your accent for Scottish or something like that. That was the, the level of insult on there, right? There. It's like you know, a taxi, no, an Uber. Uber. No, no, don't Do go yellow even. taxi. Like, Bruce Lee would like never the, drive a yellow taxi. There was something personal in there. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's very, very, Bruce very... Lee doesn't drive no, no stinking no, yellow cabs. No yellow taxis. A little, little bit touchy about that. that now, yeah. aren't you, Dre? Bruce Lee uh, would not do I'm that. I'm pretty sure if I was in an Uber with the real Bruce Lee and I started talking to him, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I could convince him to turn the meter off and hang for a while without me having to extend that no, trip. No, it's an Uber. You have to change the, the trip. Unless he gets fined for going all in circles. Do you think... If I was in the car with Bruce Lee yeah. and I started talking to Bruce Lee with what I know about Bruce Lee, uh-huh. he wouldn't turn around and be like, let's go have a coffee. Let's yeah. talk. I need, I need to talk to you. Uh-huh. He would be mm. like, no, man, I need to pick up another fare. <laughs> he I need he to needs to pick pay. up this other fare. Yeah. I need, yeah. I need cocaine money for the week. My question is, you change the destination to the furthest destination you can go. Would you pay that money? Would you just drop that money like? You know what? This destination is costing me like, five hundred dollars. Like, like having take care. me all the way to like the outskirts of Connecticut, somewhere, somewhere far. But then he's got to take me back. Otherwise, I basically got dropped <laughs> off somewhere really far away from home just to talk to Bruce Lee. And then he right. turns around. And I got to pay another another taxi to bring me back, or I just yeah. pay him to bring me back. You figure figure that out with him. Yeah, hmm. I don't think I need to do that. No, I think I would impress you the would, shit out oh. of him with my charm, oh. with my knowledge of Bruce Lee, <laughs> and he'd be like, "Hey." Let's go yeah. have some yum chai. Go, I know a place in Flushing. Let's go to Flushing. Let's go do it. Yeah. And that's all I got to say about that. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Kung Fu Genius. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Kung Fu Genius. Hit that bell for notifications. And if you have any topic ideas or questions you want me to answer on a future episode, go ahead and write them in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Word is I'm a Kung Fu Genius. Technique speaks for me, not lineage. Forget Jet Li, cause I'm the one. Many call me Sifu, but to you I'm Si Gung. And I produce masters. You surpassed us. Your Kung Fu stiffer than corpse and caskets. City Wing Chung is the house I built. Violate the gate and your blood gets spilt. Alex Richter, always the victor. Sifu has oh, got the clap. Oh, yeah. All right, ready? One, two, three. Sifu got the clap. Yo, take it easy. He got that cleaned up. It's chlamydia now. That's right. It gets cleaned up and then it becomes chlamydia. All right, guys. It's a chlamydia. Yo, we genius. got it. Yo, yo, yo. Yum cha choy. Yum cha choy. Oh, okay. Yum All cha right. choy. Okay. Just flow it. Just wow. flow it. Yeah, riff it. Riff it. Uh, but into the mic, please. <clears throat> okay. All right, peeps, on today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the genius will be answering all sorts of hot nonsense from YouTube. Lots of gems, lots of isometrics. He gave it too hot. All right, P-Bye. The genius will be answering all sorts of hot nonsense from YouTube. Lots of gems. Lots of isometric holds. <laughs> Is that what we were planning? Lots of New York Ninja. <laughs> lots of gems. Lots of New York Ninja. Lots of asymmetric holds and holds your bolds. Asymmetric holds. <laughs> lots of New York Ninja. 
Lots of eat some make map but they get they back up up. Lots of isometric holds while Bruce Lee flipping nunchucks in David Carradine silk tie all over your face and eye. Lots of isometric holds while Bruce Lee flipping nunchucks all over your face in a wild place. Let's get to it. Isometric, isometric, I. You got All right. Me. I had that one, see? <laughs> see, you cut me off. James Cagney here too. Let's get to it. Recording stopped. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>